well today we will take third class regarding coordinate geometry uh, already co coordinate geometry class 1 and class 2 have been taken and today i discuss the remaining part of the coordinate geometry within this class coordinate geometry part 3 at first i discuss how to find the area of a triangle if the three vertices of a triangle are given then we have to find the area of a triangle so let us discuss let us consider a triangle abc respectively with three vertices x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 respectively therefore area of this triangle to find the formula the easiest way or method is that you have to write the three vertices like this x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and again x1 y1 therefore area equal to area of the triangle abc equal to 1 by 2 then x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y1 complete minus y1 x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 x1 second bracket close square units so i think which is very easy to memorize how to find the area of the triangle now we find the area of a quadrilateral we know that a quadrilateral have four vertices let us consider a quadrilateral ABCD respectively with four vertices x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4 respectively therefore let us consider a quadrilateral like this a b c d are the four vertices and the coordinate of a is x1 y1 coordinate of b is x2 y2 coordinate of c is x3 y3 and coordinate of d is x4 y4 therefore again you have to write like this x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 and again x1 y1 then area of this quadrilateral is equal to 1 by 2 x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y4 plus x4 x4 y1 minus Again, first bracket y1 x2 minus y2 x3 minus y3 x4 sorry plus all our pluses y3 x4 plus y4 x1 second bracket close first bracket close square units so in this way we can find the area of the quadrilateral which is the very easiest method again i repeat if we consider the quadrilateral ABCD respectively with four vertices A x1 y1, B x2 y2, C x3 y3, and D x4 y4, then area of the triangle, area of the quadrilateral 1 by 2 x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y4 plus x4 y1 minus y1 x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 x4 plus y4 x1. Now we find the in center of a uh, triangle. We find the in center of a triangle. Let us consider a triangle ABC respectively with three vertices x1 y1, x2 y2, and x3 y3 respectively. Therefore, ABC is a triangle ABC with vertices A x1 y1, B x2 y2, and C x3 y3 respectively. And the length of BC is small a units, length of AC is small b units, 
and length of the side AB is small c units. Then in center of this triangle is equal to AX1 plus BX2 plus CX3 divided by A plus B plus C and AY1 plus BY2 plus CY3 by A plus B plus C. So in this way we can find the in center of a triangle. Now <coughs> condition for the collinear. Three points are collinear. What is the condition? We know that if three points form a triangle, then we discuss how to find the area of a triangle. But if the area of the triangle becomes zero, then these three points lie in a same straight line. Therefore, these three points will be collinear if the area of the triangle formed by these three points is zero. Therefore, the condition for condition for collinearity. That is of three points of three points x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 is x1 comma x1 into y2 plus x2 into y3 plus x3 y1 minus y1 x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 x1 is equal to 0. So this is the condition for the collinearity. So 3 points x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 will be collinear if x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y1 minus y1 x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 x1 equal to 0. That is the area of the triangle is equal to 0. Now regarding this part some questions we have to verify whether four points form a parallelogram or rectangle or square or rhombus or an equilateral triangle or isosceles triangle or right angle triangle. In that cases, you have to find the side of the uh, length of the sides and verify the condition. If the condition for uh, rectangle holds, then it is rectangle. If the condition for parallelogram holds, then it is parallelogram like this. Now come to Shifting of position. It is very important. Now we, cons we consider a Cartesian coordinate system in a plane. Suppose there are two axes x o x dash and y o y dash y dash in a plane. With respect to the origin o, we consider a point small x y here. Therefore, if it is p. Then we draw a perpendicular on x axis, Pn. Then Pn is equal to y and Om is equal to x. Now we change the origin O into the new point, say O dash. Therefore, here we draw a line which is parallel to x x dash and parallel to y y dash. Therefore, a new coordinate system is formed. Capital X, capital X, O dash, X dash is the horizontal line and horizontal axis and Y dash, O dash, Y, Y dash, O dash is the vertical line and there comes the new system. Therefore, if O dash is the origin, then the coordinate of O dash in the new system is 0, 0. But with respect to the old system that is when we consider O is the origin then the coordinate of O dash B let us consider HK therefore this portion is K and this portion is H and let us consider the point P must be changed if we consider O dash is the new origin let us consider the new point P is capital XY respectively therefore we can say that capital X this is capital X is equal to small h capital X plus small h is equal to small x and 
capital Y plus small k is equal to small y. So this is the relation between the old system and new system. So again I repeat, if a point P, the coordinate of P is small xy with respect to the old system O as origin and when O is shifted to the new origin O dash with whose coordinate with respect to O is hk then if we consider finally O dash is the new origin then the coordinate of P must be changed and let us consider the coordinate of P be capital XY then from the diagram it is very clear that small x that is OM is equal to H plus capital H and small y that is PM is equal to capital Y plus small k. So when we want to sit the origin or change the origin then we have to use this relation to find the equation in the new system. Then come to locus. What is locus? At first we have to understand what is locus. If a point P is moving in a plane in such a way that it maintains a definite rule, then the path described by that point is called the locus of that point. So we have to consider in this case a definite rule which is given in the sum and we have to just explain that rule in terms of x and y then an equation will come that is the locus of the point that is the path described by the point so regarding locus one example is that a point is moving in such a way that at any point its coordinate is cos theta and sin theta therefore a point b suppose moving in such a way that at any point its coordinate is p of cos theta comma sin theta. Therefore the locus of the point P that is the path described by the point P we have to find. Let at any point of the path the coordinate of any point be hk. Therefore h is equal to cos theta. Therefore h square is equal to cos square theta and k is equal to sin theta. Therefore k square is equal to sin square theta. Now, therefore, h square plus k square is equal to cos square theta plus sin square theta implies h square plus k square is equal to 1. Therefore, locus of the point P is x square plus y square is equal to 1. So, in this way, we have to find the locus of okay? Now, up to this coordinate geometry, that is introduction to coordinate geometry finished. In the next class, I start straight line, which is very important part of the coordinate geometry, rather in the syllabus of class 11 12. So, in the next class, I discuss about straight line. So, up to this, I provide three class introduction to coordinate geometry, part 1, part 2, and part 3. And within this three class, I cover all the concept, primary concept and introductory concept of coordinate geometry. Thank you. Welcome.